Welcome back. Sydney's lockdown is poised to end on Friday, but a surge in new COVID infections has left the New South Wales Premier stating that it's highly unlikely. Joining me now to discuss the politics of the week is Ebony Bennett from the Australia Institute and James Bolt from the Institute of Public Affairs. Good to see you both again. Ebony, first to you. 77 new cases today in New South Wales, certainly not the news that we were wanting. The Premier expecting more than 100 tomorrow. Is the outbreak getting away from the state's gold standard contact traces? OK, got some audio issues there. Sorry about that. James, what do you think? Do you think these case numbers justify stricter lockdown measures? Uh, they absolutely don't, Kenny. Look, I know the case numbers are rising, but here are some other numbers that people really need to be focusing on. Right now in New South Wales, there are 52 people in hospital right now with COVID. There are 15 people in ICU and only five of which are on ventilators. Those are quite small numbers for a state as big as New South Wales. OK, do these numbers really justify the criminalising of unnecessary shopping and to be the stupidest moment in the last 15 months of the criminalizing of browsing in stores okay uh covid elimination is not feasible and requires an incredible amount of state tyranny in order just to get it to work okay now i want everyone watching the euros tomorrow maybe watch the conor mcgregor fight this afternoon to see the crowds in those stadiums and to realize that the rest of the world with much more serious situations with covid than what we have here in australia are opening up. It is about time that Australia learn to live with the virus, and that would mean that Sydney does not need to see even more uh, terrible restrictions than the ones that they are currently suffering under. Yeah, but James, the problem is, is that if, if we just let it run wild, don't you think that the cases will get out of hand? Uh, you know, too many people will die. We don't have enough people vaccinated yet to sort of allow that to happen. That, that's the stance right now from the authorities. So you, you're saying that you don't agree with that? I don't think let it rip is the thing. I think this is the problem with what Australia has been uh, told that is the only two options. You either have a let it rip or you have a lockdown. At the Institute of Public Affairs, we know, uh, we've been researching into the international efforts to fight COVID. And what we find is that the best thing you can do is to make sure your hospital system is well uh, fixated to make sure that they can deal with any outbreaks to get targeted in the community. But this idea of these sweeping lockdowns that affect whole states, that send thousands of people out of a job, that unleash mental health uh, concerns across the state, these do not work and they cause a whole amount of suffering. Uh, the latest stuff that's coming out of the US shows that it doesn't really matter whether a state locks down or not. It doesn't have the biggest in, uh, uh, relationship with how bad a COVID outbreak is. Ebony, do we have you again? We do. There you are. What do you think about where we're at right now with, you know, potentially 100 cases tomorrow and, and, the, and the current stance? Yeah, look, it's really concerning. And look, the virus we've always known since last year that the contact tracers are always playing catch up, uh, looking at what the community was doing perhaps to up to two weeks in the past. And with exponential growth, uh, we can see that it's really easy for it to overwhelm contact tracers. We saw the number of contacts that New South Wales was having to trace double within uh, one day at one point. So it is concerning. Uh, I think, you know, the IPA is well known for being against lockdowns, but state premiers, I don't think, ever really want to go into lockdown. Everyone acknowledges the downside for it, but the community expects to be protected. They expect to be safe. And what the lockdowns enable is uh, time for the contact tracers to get on top of things, to stop the movement uh, of the community. But in New South Wales, of course, we're seeing a lot of the transmission within households, which is very concerning. Uh, and of course, there's nothing that we can really do except track and trace lockdown when we need to uh, until we get the vaccine rollout sorted. And we're well behind on that as well, unfortunately. Now, just talking about the vaccines, James, the federal government is launching the new Arm Yourself vaccine campaign. Uh, lots of health professionals have been calling for a reset of the messaging around vaccines. Do you think that this campaign is going to be effective in addressing some of that vaccination hesitancy? 
Uh, to be honest, I didn't find it the most uh, convincing of all the ads I've seen, just a series of people's shoulders. I think what's really happened with international campaigns is that they tie the idea of vaccinations to an improved life, OK? Every time a vaccine gets taken, a theatre opens up. Every time a vaccine gets taken, you can travel again. And I just wonder if the government's messaging around what it's going to take for Australia to get back to normal is what's holding Australia back from having a similar campaign here. All we can say is a vaccine stop you from COVID because we don't have vaccinations tied to any idea of returning life to normal. But some encouraging signs, Ebony, more than 9 million people or 32.5% have now had their first jab. The vaccine rollout seems to be ramping up. What are your thoughts? Look, we can certainly hope that it's ramping up. It wasn't that long ago that uh, the vaccine rollout wasn't a race. Now, of course, we're on a war footing. Uh, but, of course, it's not the first jab, but the second jab that confers uh, the most amount of protection. That's the number that we need to be tracking, and I think that's still hovering at only around... 10%, uh, including, you know, the, the priority 1A uh, people in the, in the first rollout. I'm not sure even all of them have been vaccinated fully yet. So we're well behind where the government promised we would be. And of course, when it comes to those health campaigns, uh, the government has been a bit gun shy, I think, on that because of the supply issues that they're having. So the Prime Minister, who's been a little bit missing in action, I have to say, uh, needs to be doing whatever he can in the background. Uh, he's accelerated those uh, Pfizer jabs coming early, but uh, you know we need to be doing other deals where we can, uh, whether that's for Moderna or others, to get the vaccinations happening much quicker. Certainly now that the virus is circulating uncontrolled in the community, there's obviously a lot more motivation. Uh, people wanting to get the jab, uh, even if they're not in those priority groups. And at this point, we just need to do it as quick as we possibly can. As James said, that's what will lead to life getting back to normal for Australians. Yeah, and thousands of under footies are, are coming forward for the AstraZeneca shot as well. Guys, before I let you go, I just want to talk about something a bit more positive. Ash Barty's Wimbledon win. James, what was your thoughts? Uh, I actually have a confession to make here. So I was really keenly watching the match and then I closed my eyes for a brief second in the <laughs> late in the second set. And when I woke up again, Ash Barty was holding the trophy aloft above her head. So I don't need well, if I, least, I don't know if I need to hand in my... I saw the trophy, but I don't yeah. know if I need to hand in my passport somewhere. I uh, just get my citizenship <laughs> taken away from me. Fat lot of good it's going to do me for the next six months anyway. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, it's bad signs by me. Bad times. Ebony, what are your thoughts on, on Ash Barty's win? Yeah, look, it was just so exciting. It was a, an amazing match. Uh, I was definitely glued to the telly. There were several really exciting rallies there. But, you know, Ash Barty is an absolute superstar. Uh, and I thought the tribute that she paid to the previous Wimbledon singles women's winner, Yvonne Gulagong Cawley, was... Um, you know, just fantastic. And the obvious relationship between the two of them is really heartwarming. And a big shout out to Dylan Alcott as well, who's uh, won, I think, his second Wimbledon title uh, in the quad men's singles. Uh, very exciting for him too. I think um, I didn't watch that one, but um, he's come out on top and he's just having a smashing year. So he's, what can't he do, Dylan Alcott? He's absolutely everywhere. He's amazing. Yeah, no, they're, they're amazing. They've given us something positive to talk about today, at least. James Bolt, Ebony Bennett, always great to chat to you both. We'll catch you next time. Thank you. Appreciate it. 20% uh, get nothing. They're really unfair tax cuts. People want to see much stronger action from the government when it comes to climate change. It's no coincidence that we have a wages crisis in Australia. Transitioning to net zero emissions, it doesn't seem like there's much room for gas. 